Today is an extremely hot day and we're working outside. It's crazy. I wanted to work in the fish room, but yesterday I went to some fish stores and maybe I can show you some clips of that. And I ended up getting some rocks. So today I wanted to show you guys some of that and what I'm going to do with it. I have no plans on where I'm going to store them. So today I was cleaning out the garden because I need to create some space to where I can put all my hardscape materials because I've started to collect quite a good amount of rocks and wood that I'm running out of places where I can store them. And I don't want to store them inside uh, my fish room or in the house because they're really heavy and I don't want to be taking them in and out of the house and in the fish room the reason why I don't want to store it there is because it takes up a lot of space. Before I show you guys the hardscape materials let me show you some of the rice fish and the kind of temperatures that they're dealing with. Today it got up to 40 degrees Celsius which I'll put the Fahrenheit right here for you guys but it's really really hot uh, but they're able to handle it and one way you can give them a little bit cooler temperatures is by putting some shade over them so you can see this area is shaded we've got this like little roof up above so they're partially shaded during the hottest part of the day and they've also got all these lily pads as well as water hyacinth that will provide shade for them down at the bottom so you can see them there doing really good my uncle likes to feed them couple times a day and here are the babies that we hatched out this year. To hatch out babies all you need to do is have some floating plants or have a spawning mop and I'll show you guys the spawning mop right here. So this is a spawning mop that's really dirty just been sitting outside for ages but if you clean this up give it a good wash and you place it in the pond the rice fish will lay their eggs on this little thing, but we'll just keep this here for now. But I guess my uncle and aunt like to do the natural way of using plants. So you can see all the water hyacinth. And if we pull one of those out, I bet you there'll be some eggs on it. Uh, but you can see, even though it's really hot, this is another thing. My aunt went and bought this little, I'm not sure what you call these things, but uh, yeah, she bought this and I helped her attach it to the post so that it stays in place and blocks direct sunlight from getting in. Well, you don't want too much direct sun because too much sun can be a problem. It'll get too hot and you'll have too much algae. But, slipper keeps getting stuck in between here. Alright, so you can see they're all quite nice in here. Now let's head over to my side of the garden where I have my little own rice fish and they're also struggling quite a bit because it's really really hot but rice fish are one of the most hardiest fish out there. It's one of the most popular pets in Japan, pet aquarium fish in Japan. You've got rice fish and goldfish. Yeah, they're more, more popular than guppies for sure. So They even use rice fish as feeder fish here. So. Yeah, alright, so here we come. So today I've been working on the yard all day, well all afternoon. You can see all this weed I've put together. This was just filled with weed. If I've got any clips or pictures of what it was before, I'll try to put it up. But this whole area was like almost unwalkable. You couldn't get through this. Um, but this is all the work I've put in today. And I want to make more space in this yard so that I can keep some different types of rice fish have a spot just for rice fish and I've mentioned in the past but I want to put a greenhouse somewhere here so that I can grow my aquatic plants immersed during the winter as well as store some of our hibiscus in the winter because right now in the winter time the hibiscus goes in the fish room and it's really annoying because the hibiscus always drops leaves and then you get little pest bugs on it and it's just really not pleasant and it takes up a lot of space too so I want 
to build a greenhouse. I'm not sure if we'll be able to do it this year. Uh, so I've got to really sort out and organize this backyard um, and make space. The backyard has always been nice, but it's just always been so crowded with plants and just very little space to walk. The way my grandmother built this garden, this yard, was she put a really thin, narrow path right through the middle of it. And it's always been hard to walk around the rocks that built the path, that laid out the path on the sides were always wobbly and if you put your foot on them they'd like tumble and it was kind of dangerous so that's why I kind of want to rebuild it, clean it up, maybe put some weed barrier or something, the, the, the stuff that prevents weeds from coming out. Yeah, I'm not gonna throw away any of the trees, any of the plants here because that's a uh, sentimental value. I don't want to destroy any of that but I might move some stuff around to organize it better. I think we can make this garden look good. I'm not planning to strip it all down like to bare nothing because I love green. Green is my favorite color and I love nature so I want to keep as much of it here as possible but just control the weed. The weed is the most like annoying thing here. It's just too much of it. Let me show you guys further back in. So today I've done this front area. So I'd say I've done like one-fourth of the garden today. We've still got this back area. I don't know what's going to happen with this back area. But the thing I'm planning is to clean up like this half of the garden. The half that's, to, that's next to the house. And then the part that's behind is make this into where all the trees and plants are and all the bushes. And just have that like the focal point. Yeah, so then we'll have space to walk around and you can see like this is what I mean all these rocks that were bordering the path If you step on this, it's very shaky very Very wobbly you see so that's not even in place So that's what I want to fix here And then you can see all the weed here. So there's like no space to walk about So now let me show you what I got yesterday at some fish stores that I visited and quite far away, those fish stores. So I got two boxes of rocks, and they're not just any kind of rock. Oh my goodness. And I got myself a little present. It was half price. Alright, so these are the rocks I got yesterday. This two boxes of rocks as well as this one serious stone. This stone was just so nice and it wasn't actually in the pile of rocks that were for sale. It was like left on the side and I didn't know if it was for sale or if it was already bought by some other customer. So I went up to the owner, I asked him, is this rock um, by any chance for sale? And he said, yeah, it's for sale. I was planning to use it on one of my, on my tanks, but if you really want it, I can sell it to you. So <laughs> I managed to snag this up. Such cool character. Look at all these lines and the shape of a serious stone. Amazing. I've got some serious stone uh, that I'll show you later. So I'll have to put this with a pile of serious stone that I got. And then these stones over here, this is a stone that you can no longer get in Japan. It's called Manton stone. If you know Frodo stone, it's similar, but the colors are a little bit darker and more like purplish green and just so nice. These rocks in Japan, we say it's haiban, which basically means it's no longer in production. These rocks used to be sold by Aqua Design Amano, ADA. Uh, they used to collect all these rocks and distribute them to fish stores where they'd sell them. And they're no longer able to do that. I'm not so sure why. I think maybe they're no longer able to collect it anymore from the collection point. Some people do sell these online, secondhand rocks, used rocks, and they sell them for crazy prices. Like one rock, something like this, can go for three, four hundred, maybe even five hundred dollars, which is insane. And I couldn't have gotten a better deal on this. The owner, I actually wanted this one piece of rock because this was the nicest looking rock in the bunch. Just look at probably one of the nicest mountain stones I've ever seen. The characters, all the lines and all these rugged edges, just so, so beautiful. Now how I got all these rocks was pretty a cool story. We were just about to leave the shop Aqua Studio Nature and my friend I was with spotted these two boxes right by the entrance, the exit 
by the door. He said, I wonder what stones these are. I looked through the gap and I knew instantly that they, they were mountain stones. I could just see the purple and green color through those little gaps and man, I, I knew instantly I had to take a closer look at it. So I asked the owner if we could see inside the boxes and he showed it to us. I initially asked him how much it was for this rock because this was the one I really wanted. This, this was the nicest looking rock in the bunch. But he said he wouldn't just sell me one single rock. He wanted to sell the whole thing at one go. So I ended up buying the whole thing. And it was a price that I just couldn't resist. You can see my rice fish. They do get a little bit of shade from all these trees surrounding them. I do want to give them a better setup. Today I've just set these two other mini ponds up just so that I could take a, a decent thumbnail. But in the near future, I want to set up something more permanent. Uh, Some place I can have like a little rack where I can put a few different types of rice fish and maybe grow some aquatic plants immersed. I want to give you guys a quick update of the aquatic plant immersed farm setup we did last week. You can see here the glossostigma and the hair grass. This is just regular hair grass. It's not the dwarf variety so it can get quite long but you can see it's starting to fill out quite a lot more so nice really love how these are growing well and then of course we've got the polygonium also an aquatic plant and then we'll take a look you can see all this mess this is currently where all my aquascaping rocks and stuff are um, yeah uh, right over here so you can see they're already starting to show immersed growth you see all these round leaves. I've got to water this today, but yeah, it's so nice that they're already starting to grow immersed. So just one week and you'll see some new growth come out here as well. You can see the fresh green bits are the new immersed growth, which is awesome. And here, of course, in just a few more weeks, this thing is going to be like, like, just lush it's gonna be all green that's really good I'm really happy with the growth so far just wait a few weeks I'll keep updating you guys on that I've also got some more aquascaping rocks over here all these rocks here are from the land the garden they're they're not really rocks we put in fish tanks although they can they should be able to be used in fish tanks but we've got so many different types and they're not really the nicest looking rocks for aquascaping. Like many of them are very round and don't have much character. So I don't know what to do with all these because I've got a whole bunch of these like landscaping rocks that I don't know what to do with. Let me know in the comments below what ideas you have for me and my hardscape materials, what I should do with them. And what do you guys do with your materials? Do you keep them outside or do you keep them inside the house? Do you put them in boxes or do you just leave them out? What I really want to do is I just want to create an empty space in the garden where I can just leave all my rocks. I kind of want them to be in the open so I can see them and just admire them because it would be kind of a shame if I put them in a box and can't ever see them. Also I was reading a book and I saw Takashi Amano, uh, the founder of ADA Aqua Design Amano, his hardscape materials just laid out all over the place, outdoors, just looks so nice. Just a pile of rocks everywhere. I think it just gives you inspiration if you see all that hardscape materials. It makes you want to create something so. Yeah, I, I, I really want to do something like that out in the open. Maybe clear the side of this building or something and have my rocks up against it. Maybe out in the open. I think it'd be better to have it up against a fence or a, a wall or something though. I've got this area next to the fish room and I thought about cleaning all of this out, uh, making this place empty and then storing all my rocks over here. But the thing is, we get spiders and I don't want spiders like roaming around here because spiders, they like to build their nests in all the crevices of rocks and I've already found a number of times where spiders have built their nests in my aquascaping rocks and it's really annoying. One time I found a bunch of baby spiders just crawling everywhere and I don't want that anywhere near the fish room uh, because we, we also do get huntsman spiders here and seeing those things is really like freakish and 
they're huge. They're huge spiders, and I don't want that here. So that's why I really want all the rocks to be kind of away from the fish room so that the spiders won't be near the... Well, they spiders will obviously move in and out, but it would be better for them to stay away. So I know today's video probably wasn't the most interesting, but I hope you got to enjoy uh, the look of the backyard. We're slowly making this place neater and also got to show you guys the rice fish today. And one of the most common questions I get asked about my rice fish is their temperature range. How hot and how cold can they go? So for heat, they're able to withstand almost anything. The water to the touch is almost hot. It's very, very warm. But just make sure to give them some shade. Be creative with the ways you give them shade. Anything will work. You can put something on top to cover it up. You can put plants, floating plants. Do whatever you can to give them shade and they'll be happy. Right now, half of their area is shaded. And I also want to know what you guys do with your hardscape materials. I'm really just looking for ideas what I should do with all this material because I really love my aquascaping rocks. They're really nice and I think I enjoy what looking at them more like this than putting them <laughs> in my fish tank, which is kind of... Uh, not the purpose of having aquascaping rocks, but I don't know, I just love the look of these stuff. It's just so natural. I guess it's, it's probably why I like nature so much. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys next time.